Hi, I'm Jim Pepin. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Clemson University, and I'd like to welcome you to your visit to our Information Technology Center. This building was constructed in the mid-1980s to house large IBM mainframe computers. Since then, the world has changed, and in the last couple of years, campus cyber infrastructure has become an important part of any university that wants to compete in the modern world. What you will see here is the things we have done that has enabled Clemson to become a leader in this field. This building, built in the 80s, is very large. It's 20,000 square feet of computer space. This gives us a, a, a qualitative and quantitative advantage over most other universities. This space enables us to do things with our faculty that other universities can't do. Now let's begin the tour. We will now start the tour at the back of the building. What you're seeing now is the uh, generator that provides the backup power for the building, which means that it can provide enough power for our email and web type services. Now you're looking at the two megawatt transformer that was recently installed for the building. This is enough power to run both our enterprise equipment, which is the eight tenths of a megawatt, and our high performance computing at a neighborhood of another million watts. We're now in the main uh, power distribution room for this building. The box we are just looking at now is the main uh, shutoff switch for the building and the little meters show how much voltage and amperages are actually being delivered to the building. If you look real closely as we're zooming in, you can see that it's 480 volts and around 1,000 amps. Right now that's about uh, 8 to 9 tenths of a megawatt of power. We're just now bringing up on our new loads. As we pan to the left, you will see uh, other uh, panels that have been installed. This panel we're looking at now is the panel that actually runs the high performance computing. Now we're looking at a what's called a Kirk key system. This will provide a bypass around our power protection gear and if you look right there you'll see that there's a key and that key will not turn unless the, the box that this is protecting is in bypass. Much of the, the things that happen in data centers that have brought them down is, that has been discovered over the last 20 years is people making mistakes with things like this. So this was developed as a, as a fail-safe method to make sure you don't create these kind of problems for yourself. We're now in the battery room for the uh, largest UPS we have, the 750 kilowatt. You're looking at a, a, one of the cabinets open and that is actually the batteries that will run that, that UPS. The racks of batteries we have here is good for between 10 and 15 minutes of power. This is the amount of time that the high performance gear would stay up if there actually was a power failure. The generator is there for the case that there's a, a hurricane or some other case where we'd actually lose Duke power for some period of time. But for the 99% of the cases, this kind of protection is good enough. What we're looking at now is a large empty space in our basement. This is where we can build out future power areas. Plus, this used to be an open basement, and as we're swinging to the right, you'll see where our new power protection gear has been installed on the other side of that wall. We're now walked into the room that has the small UPS. This is the one that runs our enterprise gear. This is around 225 kilovolt amps of protection. Now we're looking at the larger UPS, which is 750 kilowatts. This provides the protection for all of our high performance gear, and it's uh, bypass switches you're now looking at. Again, it's one of these Kirk key systems. Now we're going to look at the outside of the building. We're going back out into the back and we're going to look at the, the air conditioning that we have um, and the outside parts of this air conditioning. What you're looking at now is the old gear that w has been in the building for many years. This water chill unit is actually two to three times as much capacity as all of those little small package units together. This provides 250 tons of chilled water at 45 degrees and 250 gallons per minute. Now you're looking at the piping that, that takes the chilled water and runs it down into the building. Those are the places where the water goes in and actually goes to an air conditioning unit. What you're looking at now is, is the other side of that chilled water unit. You'll see two red pumps, each of which is enough to run our entire facility. So these pumps are redundant, which is very important. They're a moving part and they're the, one of the more likely things to break. So there is automatic equipment that will shut down one pump, turn on the other if necessary. first thing you're looking at are the air conditioners that the chill water unit uh, actually uh, enables. There's four of them in a row. Each of these air conditioning units is 50 tons. A typical house is maybe 10 or 15 tons of air conditioning, so that gives you a scaling of what we're doing. What we're looking at now is our tape robot. This thing can hold 
3,000 tapes as it's configured today, and it can be expanded to 6,000 by coming back towards us. As we were looking inside, you can see where the tapes are stored in little slots, and there's a robot hand that reaches out, grabs the tape, and puts it in a tape drive. We're using this as a backup storage for our large-scale disk that we have that supports both the campus as a whole plus our high-performance computing. What we're looking at here is an open space where we could actually install two more tape silos in the future to have a co total capacity of 18,000 tapes over time. Each of those little boxes you're looking at contains 48 disk drives of 750 gigabytes that can run in parallel up to controllers that then run at multiple 4 gigabyte per second connections out into our cluster. This kind of storage means that as you generate large, large amounts of data, you can move it from the cluster. What we're looking at now is actually the cluster itself, or half of it. This is 256 nodes of the cluster. There's another 256. And what we're zooming in on now is actually the 10 gigabit per second switch that allows this to become a high performance cluster and do jobs in parallel between all of the nodes. Each of these racks contain 36 uh, computers. Each of those computers, as you're looking at them now, contains two sockets. Each socket is a, is a quad processor, and in total there's 12 gigabytes of memory in each of those computers that you're looking at now. We're going to go around to the back of this in a second, and that will be where all of the wires. This is where the, the rubber meets the road. So what you're looking at now is how this is wired together. What you're looking, this here is actually the head nodes are the nodes that do the I.O. for this computer. These are machines that, that are parallel together to send data into the cluster itself. We've now moved over to our enterprise row. This is the equipment that runs email and web services and things like that. Examples of those racks in that row are things like these disk drives. These disk drives are where databases would reside, where Novell storage would reside, things that you would use on an everyday basis. This is, is the, the meat and potatoes of what we're doing at the university. We now are seeing the Ethernet switch that connects all of these together. That Ethernet switch, there's two of them on, it's separated from each other. If one of them breaks, the other one will keep things going. What we see here is the, is the IBM mainframe. In the days when this building was built, that mainframe, that one box, that one black box would have filled the room that we're in. Today it's one box. This box is used to run the state Medicaid system as well as the student uh, registration system that are legacy applications that run on the mainframe. What we're going to do in a second is turn around and look at the tape silos that the mainframe uses. Those tape silos are about 15 years old. They'll be phased out in the next year or two for new tape silos that are smaller, more compact, and use faster tape drives. Again, this is just used as backup and staging storage for the mainframe Medicaid and student registration system. The Network Operations Center has two purposes, one of which is to actually run the campus computer network, but the other is to also watch what is going on inside of the computers in the areas that we are just in. The left-hand screen there is the IBM mainframe. That is actually the, the operation and my asking for tape mounts and whatnot. This is the uh, state network. These are things, this is our spectrum monitor and a thing called Intermapper. All of these things are used to proactively watch what's happening either around the state at our rec centers, what's happening on the campus network. What we're seeing now is the, is the, the campus mail system, the exchange server. The flows that you see there are mail messages coming in and out of campus. If one of those flows stops or turns a different color, that allows the person in the network operations center to know that something's wrong. What we're seeing now is an intermapper display program. The, qu the squares you are seeing on the top, the top two boxes are in, are in ITC, the middle two boxes are in pool, and the bottom two are what we call the campus core. The little bits that you see moving across there actually show us how the data is moving around campus. What we have seen is a, is a very unique facility at a university. In summary, this Network Operations Center is a unique resource for Clemson that allows us to be able to provide a service not just to campus, but to people on the state as well. This resource, a lot of other universities would kill for. I'd, I'd like to thank you for taking the tour. If you're ever interested in physically seeing our facility, please contact us. We're always proud to show people what we have here and what the university has done.